this session, I'm going to provide you a very quick uh, tips regarding Azure Data Factory. And for some of the tips, I'm going to show you demo as well. So before starting, let's thanks to our sponsors. Um, and then this is me. If you like to know about me, then you can join me in LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, so let's start with tips now, because we have only 20 minutes. So, so first tip is to save your change and refresh Azure Data Factory before using Publish button. So some of you might be using a Publish button rather than different way, manually. Then what happened here, when you and your colleague both are working in the same feature branch, and uh, you have done your change, and you, without refreshing and saving, you just do publish button, then it will save your change and it is overwrite your call exchange. So it, sometimes you will get that kind of the issue. So always best practice it to save your change, then refresh your Azure Data Factory, and then click manually if you're using that way, uh, publish button. So we will see, uh, see let, uh, later on in our browser as well. So tips two is to, uh, when you like to modify any object uh, regarding, you know, like pipelines or data set or data flow or link service, then first you should find out dependencies, like who is using your that object. Because sometimes you overwrite uh, change for particular business outcome, and that object is used by different business outcome as well. So you will get problem later on. So it's always try to find out dependency first. So let's see here, like because we already seen two uh, uh, tips, so I can quickly show you in here as well. So this is Azure Data Factory Studio. So you can click here, so you will redirect into Azure Data Factory itself. So like for example, uh, here you have done some changes for first tips. So what you can do, you just uh, save your. Let me change something. So. Yeah, so it allows me to save here. And then if I click here, this publish button, then sometimes coincidentally it overrides your colleague's stuff. So it's always nice practice is to uh, refresh by here. Refresh the ADF and then publish after that. So it generates ARM templates and it has the changes for your and your colleague as well if they have them. So that is a tip one. And second one is to find out a dependency. So if you are new, and so always in Azure Data Factory, for any object, this is a property here you can see in right side. So if you click here, then you will find out that who is using your object. So here is related information. So you will find out if like three pipelines, another three pipelines is using this child pipeline or this pipeline, then you will see list of the pipeline. Or if you go to data set level, um, then for example, let me open here data set. Uh, so I'm opening this data set. So this is my data set, and if I can see here, this is again property. So you can see two objects is using, because it's related to year two, and these are the two th things. So it's like pipeline one, this pipeline, and this pipeline, both are using my that data set. So before modifying my data set, always nice to find out a dependency, and initially you can clone it, and then you test your change, and then you can rename properly, or you can dynamically use same data set. So that apply for all objects like pipeline, data set, link service, and data flow. So that is a tip two. Uh, and third one is, let's go back to here. So like clone, as I said earlier, that you find a dependency first, and then if, if there is a dependency, then you clone it first. Then you apply your changes, you test uniquely that pipeline or data set or whatever it is, data flow, and then you can use generic pipeline by slightly modify it and think that it will work for all other business outcome as well. It's not breaking anything. So always nice to clone out, uh, nice to clone out. So here, especially if you're using data flow, then uh, let me show you here. So this is my data flow. So for example, initially you will find that this data flow worked yesterday. It's not working today. What happened? So you may have changed file, or you may have added some steps here. Because of that, it's not working now. So you can't see even preview as well. So always try what you will do if usually debug it by just clone out. 
you clone your data flow objects, and uh, now you can remove maybe something because you have recently added, and then you can preview step by step. Like you preview source, if it's working fine, then you will get idea that it issue is because of that uh, derived column task which I have added. And if it's not, then sometimes source, if you change your source, then also you will get some issues. So then you will, uh, we will know that it's because of the source file has changed. So that is the third tip that always clone out uh, before you actually do more modifications, especially in troubleshooting scenario. Uh, now go here. So this apply for link service, data set, data flow, and pipelines. So fourth one is how to dynamically access, so you know, any activity failure error message or any success in success scenario or failure scenario, if you'd like to know something from output of your activity, then how you can do it. So let's go back here. Um, so it's a, I think it's a fourth one. So this is the one. Uh, so this is in case of the fail. So in case of the my pipeline fail, then I would like to know uh, error message, and I would like to log that error message into different table or somewhere else I'm using, like I'm reporting files and I'm sending emails so that. So for that, you can see that this is my, let me run this one. Uh, so basically, you, we have here, if you go to here, I can show you while it's running. Uh, you can see that here. Uh, so this is a previous activity is a copy data activity, copy data one activity. So I'm just selecting that one, and then I'm using these two properties. But how you know that which property you need to use? Because sometimes this depends. If you use variable, then those properties not coming there. If you're using copy activity, then comes web activity, then you will get different properties. So what you will do? You first run your previous task, which is failing. So it's like this task is failed. So you can monitor it here. So you go to here, output activity, and here you can see that uh, this is a JSON file. OK, so you will find out that this is the error object inside here. You can actually copy in Notepad Plus, and you can find out right hierarchical structure. So here it's errors, and inside error I have a message. So this is error and message. So it's output dot errors dot message. So this way you can get error message. Um, in here, uh, in a, uh, this, so this is the value error message I have captured from failed pipeline. And I, I have captured in variable, but you can have a script task or uh, another copy task or something where you can save that error message in blob storage, and then you can finally collect all errors and then send a report in logic apps, via logic apps. Um, so that is of in case of the failure, but if in case of the success, then um, I think I have one more, which is this one. So this one also, sometimes you have requirements that you would like to know how many records has written in, in sync task, or maybe web activity have done how many records update or like that. Then that way you can uh, use uh, these uh, steps, and then you can save that one into maybe in table as well, staging table or any table which give you a reports kind of stuff. So, uh, so here you can see that um, uh, I'm using the similar things, but here I'm using now uh, uh, data read or data write. You'd like to know how many data has written, how many data has write, or like even file or other properties as well, like response or other properties. So uh, this is the very simple way. But here again also, you just need to read that JSON file. Um, so let's go back here. And um, I am just would like to run this pipeline as well. Um, so it's a copy activity. It's just a copy of file from source to sync. And then I would like to know that how many records has written or like that. Um, So here, this arrow is the output. It's showing you output all properties. So if you go here again, then you can see that you already have here uh, first properties, like data read, data writes, and other properties as well. So you can directly access by output dot data reads, or data writes, whatever you would like to take. And here you can see that I have just done that things. It's like activity 
previous activity output and then property which you you are interested but here only one thing is uh, to mind is you need to use a string otherwise it will fail so you have to convert it into string and then you will see uh, exit information like if i go to here and you can see that it will return six data read it's read six rows so you can see that property uh, and normally in real time you're not using like this variable but you use like script task or another web activity or something else so that is the tips for uh, now let's go back to here and uh, this is five to use annotation which is very simple as well and sometimes you know like um, you would like to know that this pipeline ran or this web activity ran then what it has done like which uh, url it has used like dev url or uh, uh, the test URL or like that, or which storage account or container it has used. So for that, uh, uh, you can go to here, and uh, let's go to fifth one. I quickly run it, uh, otherwise it's taking time. But in this scenario, it will work for trigger now, because annotation work for triggers only. So you can trigger your pipeline. So I'm just triggering this pipeline. And while it's uh, running, uh, I can show you how you can add annotation. So for that, uh, you go to property, and uh, here. You can add here. So let me control A, control X, and I'm just uh, deleting this one. So by default, you will see in all pipeline like this. So you can add here. But here, there is uh, no dynamic property. So you maybe thought it's maybe static value you need to add. But no, you can copy your parameter variable, global parameters. And you just uh, copy from here, and then you can paste it like as it is. So I'm, it's like, uh, um, it's, you know, like it's uh, pipelines.parameters.variable uh, or pipelines.parameter global variables or like that. And you can do more uh, concatenation as well here. But only thing is, it's not allow you to hear. So you have to calculate somewhere and just pass that expression in here. So that way, you can get that information. And now let's go to monitor area. Because we have triggered that pipeline, so hopefully it has ran. So this is the one. And uh, you can see it here, this annotation here. And uh, I have done only for uh, container level, but you can use like, you know, REST API, then you can see that which URL it has used when this pipeline ran in this environment. And you can do so many other things as well. So it gives you some more tips to dig out your uh, issue. Like if something is working but not exactly working the way you want, then you can have some uh, help here. And this works for only trigger one, not a debug one. So you have to trigger it. And sometimes this option is not here, then you can edit it. And here you can add that one, annotation, or you can select other properties. So then you will see that property in this list. So that is the tips five. Uh, now let's go to six. So like parameters, variables, and global parameters. So always and always it's a good idea to use parameters, variables, and global variable wherever is needed. Because otherwise, you need to move 100 files, and you will cre create 100 pipelines. So instead of you can create one pipeline with parameter, uh, or maybe you need variables or global parameters. Depends on what you are using, using copy activity or web activity or like that. So if using web activity in your pipeline, then you can use a global parameter to store a URL. Uh, where you're going to uh, access or file. For example, you're writing blob storage using web API, uh, web activity. Then you need a blob storage URL in global parameter. Or you can store uh, like environments, like dev environment, test environment, or UAT environment like that. So it helps you when you do automation in your CI CD pipelines. So uh, now let's go to see quickly demo. Um, So for that, I think it's a six. Uh, so you can see that this is very, very simple example. So I use this variable to get current timestamp. When my pipeline run, I need that trigger time when my pipeline has run. Because when file new file created, I'm concatenating with underscore that timestamp. So I will get idea that every time file generate, uh, they have a new timestamp. Uh, so that's why I have used this variable. And you can add variables here very easily here, and you can select this type as well. And uh, you can create parameters here by clicking here. 
So the, I have created one parameter for business outcome because I would like to run my pipeline for more than one business outcome. So that's why I have created one parameter for business outcome name. And then I have used a variable run date to get a date time. Uh, and uh, you can see here, I have said it's uh, because I need in proper time, so I have added expression as well. And then here you can see that I'm writing the information. So uh, I have used a combination of three things. I have used a global parameters because you can see that first parameter value is a global parameter. Second value is, uh, you know, like a parameter, which is normal parameter, which is my business outcome. And uh, this is a variable because my output file have underscore uh, date. Uh, and uh, actually we have very less time. So I, let me run uh, even though. Um, this is outcome one. So while it's running, uh, I'm just going to show you here global parameters. So you can create here global parameters. Uh, I have created this for a block storage URL because my URL is different uh, for uh, each environment. Uh, based on that, I have. But you can create so many different uh, purposes. Well, you can create environment variables, web URL, or uh, many other things. Uh, secrets as well, some kind of. Uh, so these are the information, uh, global uh, parameters. And now let's go pick here. Um, so yeah, this is ran successfully. And same pipeline, if I run for another business outcome, then it's work. Even 100 business outcome for that also it will work and it do same things because I have used a parameter variable and a combination of other things. Um, so that is the tips uh, six. And now let's go back to here. A Seventh one is like, you know, ex expression. Use more and more expression. So for example, nested if is not possible using the Azure Data Factory activity. So if you if activity, you can't have it inside another if activity. So you can use expression for that. Uh, same way is for each loop and until as well. You not have a, you cannot do until inside until or for each loop inside for each loop. So you have to do different things for that. You can create child pipeline for that. But for if loop, I can show you here quickly but I may not run pipeline because we don't have much time. So this is the issue. So here you can see that I have if, and inside I would like to have another if. So if I go to if here, it's not allow me to do because I already have if. But solution is you can use a expression. So like you, this is the if. Uh, here you can have so many, like many level you can go if inside, if inside, if. So you can write down this kind of expression. So this is my first if, then here I can write down another if condition like that. So that is one. Um, and now let's go back to here with uh, eight ones. It's very simple. You always try to create child pipelines. For example, if you're sending the email, you would like to send a customized email, so you have email functionality in your pipeline. So you Keep that logic into separate pipeline. So when in your Azure Data Factory, you have a five business outcome. And all business outcome using that logic. So you don't need to duplicate everywhere. You just create send logic in separate child pipeline. And you call in uh, that main uh, uh, individual business outcome, just to call it. So and another thing is this give you more visibility as well. If something is not working, then you can execute child pipeline and see this is correct. Then you go to parent pipeline and you will get idea that this logic is work, this is not work. So it help you to do more troubleshooting as well. I have a demo, but I think we don't have a time, so I'm skipping that. And another is how to write a variable into block storage. So for example, in copy activity, use, or you can use web activity for both purpose. But in copy activity, you have to select a source. So there are 95, around 95 sources, but there is no any source for variables. So how you will do that? I can quickly show you that because it's uh, important. Um, so it's, I have to find out that which pipeline is. Uh, is, that, is it seven or eight? Oh, OK, one minute left. Uh, I think it's nine. Yeah, so this is my variable. And imagine it has a value. And I would like to write down into no block storage, so I can use copy activity as well. But for that, what it will you will do? You will uh, use uh, uh, here one feature. You are using this uh, additional column. So you are additional column here. It has a variable value, and your source file actually is a dummy file. It don't have anything. So it's like uh, you doing things like even though you have source, but you're not using it. You're using this additional column. 
<laughs> so that is the one. Uh, it's working, but I think we don't have a time, so I'm just uh, going to skip. But same thing you can do with a web activity as well. You have a variable value in web activity, and instead of writing a copy activity using blob storage, you can use web activity, and you can use here um, what you call uh, URLs. You can use your URLs here. Oh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> It's still uh, left to something, but uh, yeah. And for each loop is not possible, so you can use child pipeline, uh, and then you write down logic inside. And variable, don't use variable into for each loop if you have a parallel execution, because it gives a lot of other problems. So uh, I would like to thank you for. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>